What if the universe didn't explode into existence, but instead, it was just switched on? I know, it sounds crazy. For the last half century, the idea, the story has been the Big Bang. You may have heard of it. You know, the idea that everything burst into existence from a single point, something like 14 billion years ago. That has been the story of our origins. It quite literally is the foundation of modern cosmology. But what if that foundation might be missing something fundamental? We have built our understanding of the cosmos on the idea that gravity, gravity is the ultimate sculptor. But there's this persistent historical rich alternative, if not controversial, idea that suggests something vastly more powerful is actually running the show. And today I want to talk about it, because we're going to be exploring something called plasma cosmology, because I've never heard of it, so I had to research it. And we're going to look at why this theory exists and why it challenges the mainstream Big Bang Theory, and also whether or not it might just change how you see the night sky forever. And welcome back for those that have subscribed. For those that haven't, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. Either or, I'm glad you're here because I love talking about this stuff. You know, the origin of everything. I'm Steve of The Archive, and I love to research topics and weird questions so that you don't have to. Now, before we talk about the challenger to the Big Bang Theory, we have to talk about the Big Bang Theory itself, the actual champion. The fancy term you'll hear is the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, or ACDM. It's a compelling narrative. It's a singular cataclysmic event followed by an expansion and cooling process where gravity takes over, pulling matter together to create the structure we see today. Now, this model has been successful in many ways, the Big Bang Theory. But here's where things get weird. When we look out at the universe, what is it that we see? You got stars and planets and galaxies, the stuff we're made of. But according to the standard model, all of this, everything that we can actually observe, that is just a tiny fraction of reality. And if you're asking how tiny, it's about 5%. Check out this pie chart that shows the composition of the universe. You got 5% ordinary matter, 25% dark matter, and 70% dark energy. So the other 95% is invisible. It's dominated by two massive unknowns. You got dark matter on one side, which supposedly holds galaxies together because gravity isn't strong enough on its own. And on the other side, the contender is dark energy, which is pushing the universe apart. We can't see them. We can't detect them. And despite decades of searching, we have zero direct evidence of what they are. We only assume they must be there because without them, the math of gravity driven universes doesn't work. Now imagine you're trying to understand how a massive cruise ship moves. You look at the sails and say, the wind is just pushing it, right? But the sails are tiny and the ship is massive. Have you been on a cruise ship lately? So you hypothesize, you theorize, you come up with the question, there must be invisible, undetectable currents underneath the water doing 95% of the work. And that's what we call dark matter and dark energy. They are a hypothesis, an idea required to save the theory. And this makes some scientists very uncomfortable. Because if 95% of your theory is based on things you can't prove exist, are we really seeing the whole picture? And that discomfort is where the alternative steps in. What if we're looking for the wrong thing? What if the focus on gravity has, I don't know, blinded us to something even more obvious? And here steps in another challenger, plasma cosmology. It looks at the universe and asks a fundamental question based on what the universe is actually made of. 
Now, when we look out into space, what is it mostly? We tend to think in terms of solids, liquids, and gases. But there's a fourth state of matter, and it's called plasma. I mean, check out this footage of lightning storms and the aurora borealis, and also solar flares, because plasma is basically ionized gas. It's what happens when you heat a gas enough that the electrons get stripped away from the atoms. The key thing about plasma is that because it's ionized, it's highly electrically conductive. It responds to magnetic fields. And here's the thing, 99% of the visible universe? That's even wrong because it's 99.9% .9 of the visible universe is plasma. The sun is plasma. Interstellar space is filled with it. Now. Let's compare the forces because we all know gravity. It seems powerful to us, but honestly, in the grand scheme of things, gravity is a mosquito. That is so weird to say. It is the weakest fundamental force. You have electromagnetism, the force that governs plasma, and that, that's the lie. Gravity, electromagnetism. How much stronger is it? Electromagnetism is 10 to the power of 39 times stronger than gravity. Take a look at the number behind me. That should give you an idea. I honestly can't even visualize that number. Let me give you a sense of the scale. If the strength of gravity were the width of a single human hair, the strength of electromagnetism on that same scale would be larger than the diameter of the known universe. Think about that. I mean, check out this small magnet and paperclip. Even this tiny magnet proves the point. When you use it to lift the paperclip, this small electromagnetic force is instantly overcoming the gravitational pull of the entire planet Earth. Yeah, think about that one too. So the central question when it comes to plasma cosmology is this. If 99.9% .9 of the universe is made of plasma and electromagnetism is unimaginably stronger than gravity, why would we assume the weakest force is in charge of building the largest structures in the cosmos? It's like looking at a massive hydroelectric dam and concluding that the structure was built by beavers, ignoring the giant construction equipment, you know, parked nearby. So my question now is what does a plasma universe look like? Because researching this, it seems like it's radically different. First, it changes the timeline. The Big Bang Theory gives us a 13.8 billion year history with a definite beginning, and plasma cosmology suggests the universe is potentially infinite in age and size. It didn't just bang into existence, it evolved, and it continues to evolve because there's no beginning and no end. Now, this immediately bypasses the biggest philosophical question of the Big Bang. What happened before the Bang? Second, it changes how structures actually form. Because in a lab, plasma naturally forms filaments. Think about a plasma ball. Those lamps where you touch the glass and lightning leaps to your fingers? Check that out. That's plasma organizing itself into stringy tendrils. Pretty cool, right? Now, plasma cosmologists argue that this behavior scales up, and I mean way up. When plasma moves in space, it creates electrical currents, and when electric currents flow, they create magnetic fields. Here's an example of Birkeland currents. You notice the twisted pair of filaments glowing with energy. So when you look at deep space images, you see these incredible filamentary structures connecting galaxies. The standard model looks at these and says, ah, that must be the scaffolding of dark matter. But plasma cosmology looks at the exact same structure and says, no, these are electrical circuits. They identify these as Birkeland currents massive cosmic transmission lines, moving energy across the entire universe. I mean, they naturally twist around each other, creating a powerful force that pulls matter together. Come here, matter. 
Not by gravity, but by electromagnetic attraction. This is called the Z-pinch. And here's an animation of how the Z-pinch effect actually works and how it's compressed by magnetic fields to form actual stars. Because this mechanism, they argue, is how galaxies form. Instead of a slow accumulation of dust by weak gravity over millions of years, stars might be formed rapidly within the intense grip of a cosmic electrical pinch. So I don't know about you, but it kind of shifts our perspective from a passive universe, you know, slowly cooling down after that initial big explosion to an active, connected, electric universe. And I get it, man. And when I was reading this, this all sounds super cool, kind of elegant. It explains the structure of the universe and using known forces without invoking the invisible dark matter. I didn't even mean to make fun of it. I was just trying to be animated. So why isn't everyone teaching us plasma cosmology? That's a fair question. Why is plasma cosmology in a sense considered fringe theory? Well, like everything in life, it's complicated. And it gets into the history of science. Because these ideas aren't new, they trace back to brilliant minds like Hannes Alvin. Now, Alvin won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1970. He won it for his work in magnetohydronamics. Sounds like he was Magneto, or commonly known as MHD. The study of how plasma behaves. He was a giant in the electrical engineering field. But when Elvin tried to apply his lab-proven empirical theories to the cosmos, that man hit a wall. The astrophysical community was heavily invested in gravitational models derived from general relativity. Cosmology had become a heavy mathematical discipline, and Alvin argued that cosmologists were treating space like an idealized vacuum, ignoring the complex realities of plasma. But that ain't all, because there are also real scientific challenges to this as well. Number one, the math. Gravity is relatively easy to model. It's predictable, but plasma physics is incredibly complex. I mean, it's chaotic and difficult to model on a cosmic scale. I mean, it's the difference between modeling a ball rolling down a hill and modeling a waterfall. Looks pretty though, right? And second, the standard model actually explains some things very well. The big one is the cosmic microwave background or CMB. Here's a famous map showing the CMB all those speckled oval image of the early universe stuff. The standard model says this is the echo of the Big Bang itself, this cosmic microwave background. Plasma cosmology has historically struggled to explain this as clearly as the standard model. And finally, there's this little thing called inertia. When you have decades of research and billions of dollars invested in searching for dark matter, it's very hard to turn that ship around. If plasma cosmology is right, then dark matter and energy don't exist. That is a tough pill to swallow for the entire establishment. But the beauty of science is that data always wins eventually. And right now, new technology like the James Webb Telescope is sending back data that is very hard to reconcile with the current standard model of physics. This could open the door for a new look at the plasma alternative. So in the end, where does that leave us? We do have the standard model. It's a universe born from a bang dominated by invisible forces requiring us to believe that 95% of reality is undetectable. And we have plasma cosmology. It's a vision of an electrified cosmos, eternal connected by massive currents and shaped by the overwhelmingly superior force of electromagnetism. And it's a force that we can actually test in a lab. So I am not here today to declare one theory right and the other wrong. I am not qualified to do that. But here we are to ask the questions that aren't being asked loudly enough. I am here to explore the possibility that the universe is even more vibrant, more active, and more surprising than any of us could have really ever imagined. If you like this, then maybe there could be a part two because we could still look at the evidence, the specific evidence, and explore more of the controversy over the cosmic microwave background, how stars are powered in an electric universe, and dive deeper into why those recent images from the James Webb Telescope are causing such a crisis in the standard model. 
So let me know if that's something you would like me to talk about. But until then, I appreciate everybody for joining and every subscriber that clicks that subscribe button and clicks that like button. Thanks for joining me on this crazy episode of The Archive. Keep asking questions and keep being curious. Thank you.